It is the top of the fifth, Chris Davis coming into bat as the A's designated hitter. There's a runner at first, and the A's are one run behind the Angels. He digs for the low ball, and he hits it in play, but none of the Angels players are going after the ball, and Chris Davis gets a free single. He's like, holy shit, I actually pulled that off? It kind of looked like the Angels players were confused. They must have thought the ball hit the ground first or something. When he swings, the ball darts to the ground and the dirt rises, and the ground just absorbs all the power of the swing. Apparently, the exit velocity was only 53 miles per hour. Still not school zone safe, but who cares? And it barely goes halfway to third. Quite literally the best place he could have hit it. Anyway, this play doesn't end up mattering. The Angels get a double play, but they still manage to fuck up the game as the A's take the victory. Let's go to the other Bay team to see Brandon Belt tie up the game in the first with a two-run homer. He would really like to hit it to McCovey Cove, and it almost ends up there, but this fan just catches the ball, and it ends up not getting into water. There's the C for the captain again. The camera didn't show this guy's catch, but believe me, he made a cracked save. Other than the two runs at the start of the game, Logan Webb did pretty well, got five strikeouts in the first two innings. And then at the bottom of the second, Brandon Crawford shoots the ball to the opposite side. These two have a little leaping match for the ball. I can leap higher than you. A few innings later, Lamont Wade Jr. crushes the ball. Oh my god, the sky is darker. That's how days work. And this time the ball ends up in the cove for this green and blue boat to get. A little bit early for Earth Day, but that's pretty fun. Those guys must be hella cold, but they do anything for some balls. And on the bottom of the fourth, we have a little bit of a goofy play. Crawford crushes the ball to the warning track, but Crawford digs for third and he gets ruled out. He should have stopped at second because they would have had him at second with only one out. This play sways the inning since now there's two outs and no runners. It turns into a dead inning. But Crawford makes up for it at the top of the sixth with this dive and catch. Gets the out. He launched on top of the ball like a majestic frog. And the runner's like, I tried but there's nothing I can do against a frog man. This is the one inning where things fall apart for the Giants and where I damn near shat myself. Rogers allowed two hits and puts the ball right in the center for Travis Darnod to smack to the stands. And just like that, the Giants are trailing once again. Jake McGee was placed in the IL, so Rogers had a pitch in the ninth, but this did not end up going well to say the least. Rogers always pitches great in the eighth, but for some reason when he pitches in the ninth, something bad always happens to him. It's not like he was rusty either, he got two quick outs right after this, but Will Smith's walk-off homer against Rodgers and this just tells me that Rodgers is cursed while pitching in the ninth, so he should just stick to the 8th. Big moment at the bottom of the ninth. The Giants are down to their last strike and are depending on Donovan Solano, a pinch hitter who just got off the IL by the way. He decides to swing on this one and he pulls a bullet over the Chevron dog. At the brink of losing the game, the Giants pull a pinch hit homer out of their ass. He watches the ball, the pitcher's like, I don't want to be here right now. And then Solano just starts talking to this guy. Fastball gets driven far into left field, and it's going to drop, and it drops into Duggar's hand. He's going to bump into the wall to end the inning. Nice catch. Oh, wall, get the fuck out of the way. Oh, shit. At the bottom of the 11th, there's a wild pickoff pass, and Crawford gets in the way. The guy can't complete the twister play and Crawford gets to third. Braves intentionally walk two hitters and they have to bring in Gosman. Full count, Gosman launches the ball for a flyout that easily gets caught. Crawford tags, dunks all over the home plate and is safe. Belt who is up after Gosman hugs it out with Crawford. Gosman who didn't bring a single pitch gets a walk off RBI. Do not sleep on Gosman with bases loaded.